The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest, strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. Hun King! Hun, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. (laughs) Old Bill Craig smiled with satisfaction as he walked to his dog kennels behind his cabin with Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. Bill's reputation for raising the finest Malamute dogs in the Northwest Territory was one of the reasons the Mountie never failed to visit him when he was in Bill's vicinity. Bill chuckled as he opened the shed door. (laughs) Wait till you see this litter of pups, Sergeant. Sheba sure did herself proud. Sheba's one of your best, isn't she? You're darn tootin' she is. Ain't a finer Malamute in the North Country, to my way of thinking. (laughs) There they are. Look at them. (laughs) What a big litter. Yeah, she's got too many of them. That's the trouble. Afraid she can't take care of all of them properly. They're beautiful pups, Bill. Oh, I'll accept this poor little fella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's the weakest one of the lot. He ain't got a chance with all them brothers and sisters. Looks as if he's going to be the runt. Guess I'm going to have to destroy him. Oh, don't do that, Bill. I should have done it when they were born. And I thought I'd wait a few days to see how he'd turn out. It's no use, though. I'm busy getting my team in shape for the dog race two weeks from now, and I ain't got time to take care of him. He may get along all right. No, he won't. You know how females are with a big litter like this. Mm. They believe in the survival of the fittest. They'll let the weak ones die and favor the strongest pups. Yes, I know. Ordinarily, when I get as big a litter as this, I take the strongest pups away from the mother and bring them up on a bottle. That way, the little weak ones get a chance to be fed with the mother. But I'm too busy now. I'd rather destroy him than let him die of starvation. Would you let me take him, Bill? You? (laughs) What'll you do? Carry him in one pocket of your parka and a nursing bottle in the other? <laughs> no, but I know a kid who'd give his eye teeth for him. I promised to get him a pup if I could. His family haven't much money. They live just outside of Dawson. Well, you think the kid can raise him, take him along with you. I guess the pup will be all right if he gets the proper care. Thanks, Bill. Young Jimmy Haven will be the happiest kid in the Yukon when he sees this pup. I'm going over there right now. All right, young fella. From now on, you'll get more attention than all your brothers and sisters put together. (laughs) John Haven's cabin at the edge of town was very small, and its one room was almost inadequate for three people. But Mary Haven had made it a home, and the cheerful atmosphere and the warm welcome that awaited any visitors more than made up for the obvious poverty. Sergeant Preston always looked forward to his visits there. As he entered the cabin, he was greeted as warmly as ever. Come in, Sergeant. Come in. Did you bring King? Yes, he's here. Well, come on in, King. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Mary. Take your parka off and sit right down. I'm just fixing some tea. Thanks. Is Jimmy here? Well, he'll be back any minute. Went out to see if he'd gotten anything in his new trap. He figured out how we could trap a rabbit without hurting him. Wants a pet. Well, he won't need a rabbit for a pet. Look what I brought him. <laughs> a pup. Oh, Sergeant. Oh, my. Isn't he the cutest little thing in the world? Sergeant, that sure is nice of you. That kid will be so happy there'll be no holding him. Oh, there's Jimmy now. Hello, Sergeant Preston. I thought that was your dog team outside. Hello, Jimmy. Hey, I'm glad you brought King. Hello, old boy. How that isn't you? all I brought, Jim. Look what your mother has for you. What? Why, it's a puppy. It's yours, Jimmy. You mean he's really mine? Oh, golly. He's wonderful. Oh, Mom, let me hold him. Oh, golly. <laughs> Here you are, son. He's just about the nicest thing I ever saw. I can't believe it. Oh, gee, I I just can't believe it. Do you think he'll grow as big as King? I bet he's going to be a good sled dog. i got to name him. i got to think of a good name. I know Duke. A Duke is the brother of a king, and... And maybe he and oh, King are... Oh, not so fast, Jimmy. Here, uh, let me take him while you get your park off. He's going to need a lot of care. He's awfully young. I'll take care of him. He'll get the best care any dog ever had. 
He's the first pup I ever had, and I sure won't let anything happen to him. Under Jimmy's loving care, the dog Duke grew big and strong. His fine breeding showed in his proud head and strong muscles, and he seldom left the side of his young master, whom he worshipped. <laughs> We're going hunting, Duke. We've got to get at least three rabbits. One for your supper and two for ours. <laughs> I caught a good mess of fish today, too. I hate to see winter coming again and the stream freezing up. This big trout is for you. You're getting an appetite like a horse. But while months of happiness passed swiftly for Jimmy, misfortune dogged the footsteps of his father. John Haven's face looked haggard and drawn as he talked to Sergeant Preston in front of his cabin the following winter. What do you think about Mary, Sergeant? Don't you think she ought to see a doctor? You've had so much bad luck, John. I, I wish I could be more encouraging than I'm going to be. I want the truth, you know that. Mary's been trying to hide it from me. It's been mighty hard on her this last year. My accident kept me from working my claim half the summer... Trapping season so bad this year. She doesn't want to add to my worries. Mary's a sick woman, John. I'm going into town now, and I'll send Dr. Johnson out to see her. I hope he won't find too much wrong. Thanks, Sergeant. You'll be back to see us, won't you? I'll be away for a few days. There's some trouble up in the Indian village, but I'll stop in on my way back. Be sure and do that. It always cheers her up to see you. Well, I better be on the way now. I'll tell the doctor to get here as soon as he can. All right, King, let's go. One, King! Jimmy Haven knew something was wrong as he trudged along silently through the snow beside his father the following day. John Haven, a worried look on his face, twice tried to say something. But the words seemed to stick in his throat. Jimmy's dog, Duke, seemed to sense something, too. He walked quietly at his young master's heels instead of frisking about as he usually did. Jimmy waited, and at last his father spoke. Jimmy, I don't know quite how to tell you this, but there comes a time in every boy's life when he has to grow up inside. Act like a man, I mean. Sure, Dad. You're only 13. It's too early to ask you to do it, I know. But I can't see any other way. I'll do anything for you and Mom. You know that. I know, I know. That's what makes this so hard. You've always been fine, son. You know, when I hurt my shoulder last summer, I wasn't able to do much work on my claim. Yeah, I know. The season's been bad for trapping. This has started out to be a bad winter for us. I know, Dad. I, I kind of thought you were worried. Now something else has happened. The doctor came to see your mother yesterday. He says we must send her to a warmer climate for a while. Send her away? You mean... Just until she's better... She can go to your Aunt Jane's in California. Won't we go, too? No, son. We'll have to stay here and tend to the trap lines and work my claim. Gee, it'll seem awful without Mom. But I'm bigger now, Dad. I can help you a lot. You're going to have to help in lots of ways, son. You know it'll cost a lot of money to send your mother to California. I've saved a little. It's in my bank. You can have that. Thanks, Jimmy. But it's going to take a lot more than that. I just haven't got enough. There's only one way I can see to get it. I... I... What, Dad? I'd rather cut my tongue out than say this. But I'm afraid you're going to have to sell Duke. Duke? <laughs> Not sell Duke. This is what I meant, son, about growing up inside. I know how much that dog means to you. I love him almost as much as you do. But we must think of your mother. But Duke is... He's just like one of the family. I know, Jimmy, I know. But he's a fine thoroughbred Malamute. From the best strain of dogs in the North Country. He's the only valuable thing we have. He's a fine sled dog. But... But to give him up... Oh, it isn't as bad as it sounds, Jim. I talked to Ned Gray last night. Ned offered me $200 for him. Ned lives in town. You could see Duke once in a while. Sure, I guess maybe I could. It's for your mother, son. 
the dog's yours. It's up to you to decide. I'm going to leave you alone to sort of think it over. Believe me, son, I'm sorry. Duke. Oh, Duke. <laughs> it was late the following afternoon. The wind had stopped, but the lowering clouds portended snow. A man paced back and forth on the main street of Dawson, his parka hood half covering his face. He scowled as another man hurried up to him. Where the heck have you been, Pete? Been waiting here till I'm almost froze. I couldn't get here sooner, Steve. I was trying to get the sled packed and the dog team ready. Everything's set to go tonight? No. Steve, we can't go ahead with that job tonight. One of the dogs went lame. What? Which one? It's Dan, the big gray one. He's the strongest dog we got. We can't get along without him. Those other mutts can't pull any kind of load alone. Yeah, they're going to have to do it. If we hang around any longer, people are going to start wondering who we are. Everything's right for that job tonight. Guard's sick. There won't be anyone in the bank. And look at the weather. It's going to snow. It means we don't leave a trail. But Steve will be carrying a heavy load of gold and supplies. We need a strong, fast dog team. Maybe we could buy another dog somewhere. Can't take a chance like that. Besides, we ain't got the money to buy a good dog. Robbing the bank is only half of it. The getaway is just as important, remember. I tell you, we can't do it unless we get another sled dog. Uh, hey, Pete. Look behind you. Over there. What? Where? Hey, look at that Malamute. He's a beauty. Just what we need. Maybe we can do business with that kid. He's used to a sled. The kid's trained him. Come on. Let's go over and talk to the boy. You stay here and wait for me, Duke. I'll be right back. Oh, 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 oh. Hello, kid. Hello. Fine dog you got hitched to that sled. He sure is. He's the best dog in the world. He good at pulling a sled? You bet. He, he's strong and smart. You wouldn't think of selling him, would you? No. No. Well, well what's wrong with you, kid? Did he just ask you a question? <laughs> Nothing. People have always wanted to buy him. Well, I don't see why that should make you feel bad. Duke is so. This this is my last day with him. I'll be right back, Duke. He didn't want to see us. You see him cry. He's a sure a nice dog. Too bad we didn't get to that kid sooner. This will be the answer to our problem. Maybe the answer anyway. What do you mean? Look, before that kid gets back, go into the trading post. Buy something to feed this dog. Feed him? See, I did. Get friendly with him. And follow that kid when he comes back. Find out where he lives. No sense buying a dog if we can pick one up just before we do our business at the bank tonight. Yeah, why not? I'll buy him a nice hunk of meat. <laughs> the cabins of Dawson were dark and the streets deserted as Pete and Steve drove their dog team toward the Haven cabin. A strong wind was rising and a snowfall had begun. Much farther, Pete? No, not much. Oh, we better stop here. Ho! 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 You go on and try to get that dog back here. Do you think he'll come? He'll come as soon as he gets a whiff of this raw meat I'm carrying. When you get him here, we'll rope him and tie him onto the sled. Couldn't we hitch him right up with the team now? Ah, he might give us trouble. Keep him on the sled till we get out of town after doing that bank job. When we're far enough away, we'll hitch him up and teach him some manners if necessary. Ah, I guess that'll be better. Hurry up now. we got to work fast. A little farther, and you can have another piece of this. All right, boy, just a little farther. Is that you, Pete? Yeah. About time you got back. Get him? Yeah. You got the rope ready? Yep, I got it right here. I'll give Duke this meat. While he's eating it, we'll grab him and tie him up. You ready? Sure. I use this loop as a muscle. You tie the legs. All right. Here, Duke. Nice dog. Here's some meat. Now. <laughs> I got the muscle, honey. Hang on while I tie his legs. Oh, still your ornery cur. Hurry, Pete. He's strong. Uh, uh, I got his back legs tied. Now I'll get the front ones. I can hardly hold him. Stop it, Duke. Hold still, I say. Hurry up, will you? There. He's tied up. Now help me lift him on the sled. I'm wriggling like a snake. You have to rope him right onto the sled. There. Now twist that end of the rope around him, Pete. I hope he's worth all this. He will be. When we get out on the trail, have much trouble getting them? No. He was in his doghouse back of the cabin. He wasn't even chained. He barked a couple of times. They remembered me from this afternoon, I think. I won't get away now. Let's get to the bank while it's snowing good and hard. We won't leave a trail. They'll never know which way we went. All right, I'm ready. Mush! Mush! 
you have me. Must. The following morning, young Jimmy Haven tried manfully to eat his breakfast, but finally put down his spoon beside a half-filled porridge bowl. Aren't you going to finish your breakfast, son? I, I'm not very hungry this morning. You better take Duke's breakfast out to him. Ned Gray will be here any minute now. I'd like to have Duke fed before Ned takes him. Will you do it for me, Dad? I said goodbye to Duke last night, and I, I guess it would be better if I... Sure, I understand, son. I'll take it out to him. Here, you take this tea into your mother. Maybe you better stay in her room and talk to her for a while. You you didn't tell her about selling Duke, did you? No, no. It'd just make her unhappy. I I won't let her know anything's wrong. Good boy, son. I'll be proud of you. I'll take the tea to her. Must be Ned now. Hello, Ned. Come on in. Ned, how are you, John? Am I too early? No, I was just going out to feed Duke before you took him. Funny he wasn't waiting outside the door. Gee, there's a lot of excitement in town. The bank's been robbed. The bank robbed? Yep. I went there to get the money to pay you for Duke this morning. Was Hank Evans hurt? Well, Hank wasn't guarding the bank last night. He was home. He ain't feeling well. Well, the thieves got away with over $30,000 worth of gold. 30000 Have they any idea who did it? Not the faintest. And with that heavy snowfall we had last night and this morning, there ain't a chance of trailing them. There wasn't a track in sight. You know, Ned Jamison, the owner of the bank, is almost wild. The Mounties will get the thieves. They'll probably put Sergeant Preston on the case. He and that dog of his always solved the tough ones. He should be back in town today. He left a few days ago. But he won't have a thing to go on this time. They didn't leave a clue. Oh, say, I'd better give you this money for Duke. Here you are. Thanks, Ned. Come on out with me. I'll give Duke his breakfast, and then you can take him. Hey. Or, uh, Jimmy feels kind of bad about giving him up. So you won't mind if I don't bring him back to the house, will you? Why, no, of course not. Good. He must still be in his doghouse back there. Hey, you know, I hate to take this dog away. You tell young Jimmy he can come and see Duke any time he wants to. You're doing us a big favor, Ned. I wouldn't sell him to anyone else. Here, Duke. Come on, Duke. Well, I wonder... Duke, where are you? Wait a minute. Well, that's funny. He's in his doghouse. Hey. There aren't any tracks around here. Uh, he must have run off before it snowed last night. But Duke never leaves the house. We've never had to chain him. wonder if Jimmy could have... Could have what? Come on back to the house, it... Ned. I'll see if Jimmy knows anything about this. You mean maybe he took Duke off and hit him somewhere? Oh, no, John. Jimmy wouldn't do that. I don't want to think so either, Ned. But he's so fond of that dog. Uh... Jimmy? Jimmy! What's wrong, Dad? Jimmy, Duke isn't in his doghouse. Are you sure you left him there last night? I'm sure I did. I made a bed of spruce branches with his blanket over them. He was in his doghouse when I left him. Jimmy, look at me. Are you sure that's the truth? Why, Dad, of course it's the truth. You mean you think I... I'm lying? Oh, I'm sorry, son. Of course I believe you. He'll he'll probably be back. Ain't nothing to worry about. I'll find him for you. I can track him. No, it snowed last night, Jimmy. There aren't any tracks. Here's your money, Ned. Better take it back. Oh, no, no, John. You keep it. Duke will come back here. He just must have gone off somewhere. You take this money back, Ned. When we deliver Duke to you, I'll take it. Well, if that's the way you want it. But I wish you'd keep this money. Use it. When Duke gets back, I will. Well, I guess I'll be getting along. When Duke comes home, you just bring him over any time. Uh, say, he's Sergeant Preston. He must be just getting back to town. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Ned. Hi, John. Come on in, Sergeant. Hey, I guess I'd better stay a few minutes and tell Preston about the bank. The bank? What do you mean? The, the bank was robbed last night. 
The thieves got away without leaving a single clue. The snow covered everything. I'll get to town right away. They may put me in the case. I just stopped in to see how Mary is. She's pretty sick, Sergeant. The doctor says we have to send her to California. Oh. We were going to sell Duke, but someone stole him last night. Someone stole Duke? Oh, now, Jimmy, we don't know that. I know he wouldn't run away. Two men wanted to buy him yesterday. And I saw one of them walking past our house after I got home. Well, don't bother the sergeant now. He's too busy. Do you know these men, Jimmy? They were strangers. I never saw them before. I wonder if Duke's disappearance could be connected with that bank robbery. She, maybe you got something. If the robbers wanted to get out of town in a hurry, they could sure use a strong dog like Duke. I bet Duke wouldn't stay with them. He'd come back to me. He might not have the chance. We likely won't know what happened unless the thieves get caught. Uh, is that King, Sergeant? I know. I left him with the team. That's Duke. That's his bark. You go, boy. Come in, fella. Oh. Man, Look at him. Oh, oh, he's limping. And he's been beaten. Oh, Duke, what did they do to you? Somebody lashed him with a whip. His head is cut. He chewed himself oh, loose. Oh, There's part of a harness on him. Yes, he's been hitched to a sled all right. The men who robbed that bank might have needed a dog and couldn't buy one because they didn't want to attract attention. Come on, Duke. Poor fella. I'll fix your feet and feed you. Come on. I'm going to headquarters and find out what they know about this case. Our one chance to find the men is to backtrack Duke's trail. King can do it. That might lead us to them. That snowfall last night will help. Duke's tracks will be clear in lots of places. I'll be back to see Mary when I can, John. Right now I'm going to town. Inspector Grayson of the Northwest Mounted Police smiled at Sergeant Preston standing before his desk. King stood close at the sergeant's side. Well, it's another hard case, Sergeant. There isn't a single clue that we can go on. We don't even know which direction the thieves took, if they left town at all. What do you think of the idea of following the trail of that dog that was stolen, Inspector? Well, it's a long chance, but you've solved cases in many ways before, Sergeant. I'll let you use your own judgment about it. It's the only lead we have, sir, and I'd like to follow it before it's too late. Very well. Go ahead. You always seem to get the hardest cases we have, Sergeant. But with that dog of yours, I feel that I'm turning it over to two good men instead of one. Well, thank you, sir. We'll do our best, won't we, fellow? <coughs> good luck, Sergeant. And I hope this hunch of yours is a good one. So do I, sir. Come along, King. <coughs> Backtracking Duke's trail was easy at first, as the dog's tracks were clearly outlined in the snow. But when they reached the places where the wind had blown the loose snow away, Sergeant Preston had to rely on the keen nose of his big lead dog, who raced free ahead of the team. The air darkness was falling when they reached a small clearing beside the main trail north. Hunting! Hell, you Yes, King, this is where they made camp. And here's where Duke got away. I'll have a new trail to follow, King. These tracks lead north. The tracks of two men and a dog sled. These tracks, boy, they're the men we want. Get the scent, King. They won't camp yet. Let's go on, King. After them, follow. On, King! On, you husky! It was the following evening when Sergeant Preston sighted a campfire beside the trail. A man was sitting before it, alone. He stood up as Sergeant Preston approached. Quiet, fellow. Good evening. Hello. I saw your campfire and thought I'd join you. I'm Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. Uh, Mounted? Uh, I, uh... Sure, I'd be glad to have you, but I was just getting ready to pull out. I live just a few miles from here. I... I was stopping to rest. Are you alone? I... Yeah. Yeah, I'm alone. You help yourself to the fire. I'll hitch up my dog. Before you hitch that team to the sled, I'd like to have a look at it. What kind of a load are you carrying? Seems to me that's my business. It happens to be mine, too. Don't go for your gun. Hand it over. I wasn't going. Sure. Here's a gun. Now go on. Over to the sled. I don't know what right you got to do this. Go on. Pull that tarpaulin back. All right. There. Now, stand aside so the firelight shines on this. Yes, here it is, just what I was looking for. Bags of gold with the bank's name printed on them. You're under arrest for robbery. What's your name? Steve. Steve what? I ain't saying nothing more. Where's the man who was working with you? I've done this job alone. You're lying. Before it snowed this afternoon, I saw your tracks clearly. There were two of you. Well, I guess you got me. 
Might as well confess the whole thing. I killed him. What? I wanted it all for myself. I killed him and buried his body under some branches about a half mile back on the trail. Do you realize that a confession like that will mean that you hang? Ah, you'd probably find it out anyway. King, standing close to his master, suddenly whined and sniffed the air. A twig cracked in the bushes beside the mountain, and like a gray streak of lightning, the big dog sprang toward the sound. Help! Take him away! Stop! Get away, you devil! Help! Take his dog away! Don't move, Steve. All right, King, back, fella. I've got the axe. Get up, you. Take him away. That's Get up and walk out here. I will. I will. So this is the partner you murdered, Steve. Sneaking up on me with an axe. Ah, that dog. Pete, what a gotcha. I knew I King it. was watching, so I wasn't worried. But don't think I believed you. Men don't confess to murder that easily. Pete had gone off to get branches for your beds when I arrived. That's why he was carrying that axe. I would have got you, too. I was right behind you. And now we can add attempted murder to the list of charges against you. Get together. I'm handcuffing you. Watch them, King. <laughs> It was a few days later that Sergeant Preston knocked at the door of the Haven cabin. King was by his side. Hello, Sergeant. Come on in. Hello there, King. How are you, John? Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Sergeant Preston. We heard that you caught the bank robbers. They're locked up, Jimmy. Oh, uh, where's Mary, John? She's still in bed, but she's some better. If you talk to her, don't tell her about selling Duke. She doesn't know we're going to. Where is Duke, Jimmy? He's in Mom's bedroom, lying beside her bed. His feet are almost better, but we thought we ought to get him well before we before we sold him. You're not going to sell him, son. What? What do you mean, Sergeant? I saw Ned on my way out here, and I told him he'd have to look somewhere else for a sled dog. He couldn't have, Duke. But, but the money we... I uh, had a little talk with Mr. Jameson, the owner of the bank. He was very happy about getting all his money back. I told him how it was really Duke that made it possible, and we both decided that Duke ought to have a reward. Here it is, Jimmy, $500. Sergeant, you mean this this is all Duke? His real reward is being allowed to stay with you, Jim. Sergeant, I I don't know what to say. Don't say a word, John. Just use this money to send Mary to California. Golly, I can keep Duke. I can keep him. Sergeant Preston, I, I can't tell you... You don't know what this means to me and Jimmy. Oh, yes, I do, John. You forget I have a dog, too. I know what it would mean to part with King, don't I, fella? Yes, old boy, thanks to you, this case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this same time, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. L. Prow speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. There is no such thing as an airtight case. Some criminals hide their tracks well, so that they seem to leave no evidence behind But experts such as United States government treasury agents know that no case is impossible to crack and no clue too unimportant. On a recent treasury agent show, it was pointed out that treasury agents gather bits of information from all over the world on sometimes a thousand suspects at the same time. Occasionally, these bits of information will pyramid until they take on gigantic proportions and help solve the case. Treasury agents dismiss any clue they can't afford to. For these members of the largest and the mightiest law enforcement agency in the world know the caliber of the criminals with which they deal. Every Thursday night, you'll want to hear every exciting moment of the Treasury Agent program. Treasury Agent will be heard over this same ABC station tonight. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.